Yes, it feels like we've only just had Stable Diffusion 1.5, but now it is time for the Stable Diffusion 2.0 release. We'll just have a quick look at some of the new features before we dive into getting this installed. Here we have the new text-to-image diffusion models, which are basically 768 by 768 resolution. So we've got a new model there. We've got a new model here for super resolution upscaler diffusion model. So here we can upscale things by four times. They've got an example there of taking a 128 by 128 image and upscaling that to 512 by 512. There is also a new depth to image diffusion model. Now it doesn't show it on this picture, it does in a moment, but basically it will take a depth map of that image, which it can then use to create new images. If we scroll down a little bit, we've got this little animation thing here, it goes between the pictures, and you do eventually see the depth map. There it is. So there you go, you've got the depth map and all the new images created from that. There is also an updated in-painting diffusion model as well. So we've got in-painting 2.0 along with everything else. Right, so if we head on over to the GitHub repository, here it is, Stable Diffusion 2.0. We can get all this downloaded and installed. Before we move on, let's just have a quick couple of notes about my environment here. I am using Ubuntu 2204 with an NVIDIA GPU, and I am also using Anaconda for my virtual Python environment management. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, of course, is I'm going to git clone that repo. There it is. I can just copy and paste, download. There we go. I have the repository. And of course, I CD into that as well. Now, I'm also going to make a couple of new directories here. I'm going to make a models directory and also a Midas models directory too. Then there are a whole load of things to download. Remember all those things? Well, they've all got their own models. Yes, there's a new 512 by 512 model, a 768 by 768 model, a depth model, a Midas model, the upscaling model, and the new in-painting model. So if you download all of those, into your new models directory, apart from the Midas model, which will go into the Midas models directory. For the initial setup, you'll want to conda env create minus f environment.yaml and then conda activate ldm. I am doing it ever so slightly differently, of course, because that's that's my whim and my way. So I am doing conda create minus minus name sd2. Yes, I already have an environment called ldm. I'm going to use Python 3.10 and of course, after I've created that Condor environment, I am going to activate it. After activation, I'm going to run pip install minus r requirements.txt, just as normal, but I'm also going to run an extra command as there seems to be a few things missing from that requirements.txt, namely the transformers, diffusers, invisible watermark, and dim. It's a very good idea to install the optional xformers package as well, option A, very, very easy. You can just conda install that. Of course, you will need to be on Linux. The other option is to pip install it, and this should work on Windows as well. Maybe. I don't know. It definitely works on Linux. The downside of this is it does take 20 minutes to compile, but then you'll feel all cool because you've just compiled some code. You will need apt install build essential as well because you're going to need a compiler, but basically you can just pip install Ninja and then pip install from the GitHub repo. Now we're just going to test each one of these components bit by bit, and the first one is text to image. So here we can see various examples of text to image pictures on the new 768 by 768 and the clip vit h14 as well. That all looks very nice. They provide a reference sampling script, and that is the one that I'm going to use here. So it is text to image, and I'm going to do a professional photograph of a giant steampunk rodent riding a sad cat. Now, I have already tried this, of course, and unfortunately it doesn't quite come out as I want it. It's not riding a cat, and it's not that sad, but let's have a quick run of this and see how those images come out. And there we go, we've got eight example images in our outputs, text to image samples, samples directory. We get a grid here, so rather than looking at them all individually, there they are all on a grid. They are some very nice looking steampunk rodents. The cat isn't particularly sad, it isn't particularly being ridden, but it is still very nice output. The next example they have on their page is the image modification with stable diffusion 
depth conditional stable diffusion and for this they have provided a gradio interface they've got the example there so let's just have a quick look at this so here i'm going to run this python gradio and i'm going to use the 512 depth ema checkpoint that i put into that models directory after you've clicked on that link you'll be presented with a fairly familiar web interface if you're used to using automatic 1111 there you can see you can just drop an image there or click to upload so let's drop an image there i want a prompt as well so let's have a woman wearing glasses now you can just click run but let's have a quick look at the advanced features there we can see now we've got images steps guidance scale strength seed and etm dda so we can play with any of those i'm just going to pick a random seed and click run and see what that comes out with there we go we've got a woman wearing glasses very similar to the original image and that's got the nice depth map there as well that's good let's see what happens if we turn the strength up to one is that any better is it any worse i'm not sure because i'm still testing this as well there we go it's gone a little bit black and white it's gone a bit black and white but it's still very very similar because it's using the depth map very nice i am very impressed by that I can certainly see lots of uses for that. Maybe some animations and things in the future as we've got a nice depth map. Can't wait to see what comes out for this. Okay, let's have a quick look at the next feature. This is more of a sub feature, but you can also do the classic image to image and they give you an example command there. The example command I'm going to run is this one here. Let's just pop this into my thing while it runs. And there we can see we've got a woman wearing steampunk glasses trending on octane engine it's taking that initial image that we've already seen it's using a strength of 0.8 and it's using that 512 base ema checkpoint as expected this will appear in the outputs image to image samples and it's empty at the moment so let's just wait a second and there we can see the grid has once again been produced and there we have her with her steampunk glasses very good i like that standard image to image and the next feature is the upscaling with stable diffusion. Once again, they give you an example and I have my own example here. So we've got Python, super resolution because their example isn't quite right. Super resolution, uh, the, you want to use the times for upscaling YAML and of course the upscaling checkpoint there. So let's copy and paste this one in and we will get a new Gradio interface. Again, much like the depth model one. And here we have the stable diffusion upscaling interface. Once again, you'll be fairly familiar with that. Let's just drop that same image in there and have a look at the advanced options, which are also fairly similar. You've also got a noise augmentation this time as well. For synthetic images, you may want to increase the noise, but you've got the number of samples there, DDIM step, scale, seed, play with those as usual. Let's have a different seed. And we'll also pop a prompt in there of a professional photo of a pretty face with finely detailed hair. And now we have a nicely upscaled image. Let's just open that in a new tab so we can have a little compare. There is the original image. There is the old one, so smaller and upscaled. As you can see, there's some slight upscaling artifacts. You'll be probably used to those where it smooths things out a little bit, but that's pretty good. That is a pretty nice upscaler. And the final part on this GitHub repo is the image inpainting with Stable Diffusion 2.0. And once again, they've got the example command there. The one that I am using is exactly like that. But of course, I've got my models in the models directory. So I'm using models 512 inpainting ema.checkpoint. And this is also a Gradio interface. So that will open in just a second. And now we have the Stable Diffusion inpainting interface. I'll just drop my same picture in pop in the prompt, an anime style female face, but I will need to do a little bit of inpainting here. You can select the brush size. I'm gonna select a fairly large brush and just paint out a random portion of her face and generate that. Just have a quick look at the advanced options while that is generating. We've got images, so this is gonna make four, number of steps, 45, guidance scale, 10, and a random seed. And there we have some rather beautiful anime style faces. So that about covers everything on there. Hopefully we'll see this in the automatic 1111 web interface at some point soon. But until then, this is the way to play with it. If you need to learn about more nerdy rodent geekery, then do click on this video.